Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So inshallah, today we'll start with Surah Naba. In last class, we completed the tafsir of Surah Al-Fatiha. And uh, inshallah, the way we will proceed with this tafsir is that first we'll complete Juz Amma. And then inshallah, we'll do the tafsir of Surah Baqarah and uh, and the surah after that inshallah so the reason why i'm starting with surah naba this reason why i'm starting with uh, juz amma is because uh, these surah are short and um, uh, in juz 30 we have short surah as well and if we know the tafsir and translation it will be easy for us to remember uh, the translation whenever we read salah and uh, in most madrasas, it is uh, uh, recommended that for beginners, it is uh, recommended that the tafsir of Juz Amma is done first. So since we are also, uh, uh, this is the class for beginner as well. So we are starting with Juz Amma, that is um, Juz 30 of Quran. And we will start with Surah Naba. I hope the slide is visible here, the PDF. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. What do they ask about? Or what are they asking one another about? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that what do they ask about? So just let me give an overall view of the first few ayah and inshallah then I'll explain the uh, each and every verse with word to word translation. So Allah Ta'ala is telling what do they ask about and then he, he says that they will soon come to know. Then Allah Ta'ala tells about the bounties he has given to the human, the bounties he has made for us. Allah Ta'ala asks that have you not made the earth a bedding, the mountains a peg, have we not made you in pairs and you derive benefit from each other? Have we not made sleep a means of rest for you? Have we not made night a drape in which you are able to rest? Have we not made the day a means of earning livelihood? Have we not made the seven powerful skies and a bright lantern that is sun, the rain from the laden clouds? And Allah Ta'ala then says that... Um, from the earth comes out the seeds, the plants, the dense gardens. So in these few verses, the first few verses, Allah Ta'ala asks people that have we not made all of these bounties for you? So what are they asking about? Allah Ta'ala is saying that what are they asking one another about? Anin Naba'il Aveen, about the great news. So this, uh, that, the context um, of these verses is that Allama Qurtubi uh, Rahimullah, he says that some members of the Quraysh, Quraysh were once having a discussion and uh, they were telling that uh, the Quran has uh, mentioned about Qiyamah. So some of the people of Quraysh, they were agreeing about that and some people were denying about Qiyamah. They were asking to uh, one another that what has Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has brought? What is he talking about Qayama? And that's why Allah Taala has revealed the verse that what are they asking one another about? Because Allah Taala knows everything. So this is the context of revelation when the ayah of Qayama was revealed and the Quraysh were arguing one with one another they were asking one another that what has muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought and they were arguing that qiyama is truth and some were saying they were some were saying that qiyama is uh, not going to happen so this is the discussion that the quraish were ha having so allah ta'ala says to them that what are they asking one another about ani naba'il awin about the great news and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself replies to the question and he's saying that they're asking about the great news. And what is the great news? The great news is the news of Qiyamah. Alladheena hum fihi mukhtalifun. And about which they disagree. So the people were disagreeing about Qiyamah. 
Some of them be were believing in Qiyamah, some were not believing in Qiyamah. So Allah Ta'ala revealed these verses that what are they asking one another about? Are they asking about the great news they about which they are disagreeing? Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Kalla alamun. That no, take heed, they will soon come to know. Thumma kalla alamun. Again, Allah Ta'ala is emphasizing and he's saying that take heed again. They will soon come to know. They will realize the error of their ways when Qiyamah will actually take place. But that time when they will realize that whatever Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with was truth, it will be very late for them. Then Allah Ta'ala is mentioning some of his creation. Allah Ta'ala has made so many things for his creation and it is available for every one of us to see. We see that uh, there are mountains. We see that uh, uh, we see that day and night alternates. We see the sky. So Allah Ta'ala is telling, telling the people that have we not made have we not made the earth a bedding? Alam Najalil Aroda Mihada. Have we not made the earth as a bed? Okay, are you following? Allah Ta'ala is mentioning these things so as to emphasize that uh, if we can make these things, then the uh, then um, why can't we make you? Allah Ta'ala is telling that Allah Ta'ala has the great power. He has um, he has the great power of creating all of these things, then certainly he has the power to resurrect people on the day of Qiyamah. That's why Allah Ta'ala is bringing these examples. Allah Ta'ala is telling that Alam, Alam, it means Alam is the question. It means have we, have we not? Naj'alil arada. Have we not made earth? Earth is earth. So have we not made the earth? Mihada, yani bed. So have we not made the earth a bed? That it uh, that is earth is like a bed. It is very vast. Everything, everything, uh, the human, the animals, the plant, everything is on the earth. Wal jibala autada and the mountains as pegs. What does this mean? It means that mountains prevent the earth from shaking, and man is able to stand on the earth. He is able to walk and travel easily on the earth. If the mountains were not there, the, the stability of the earth would have been dis, uh, disturbed. So the mountains are like pegs, which is holding everything finally. So Allah Ta'ala is telling that, have we not made the earth as a bed and the mountains as pegs? And we have created you in pairs. And this is a very big blessing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he has created uh, 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 us in pairs. And Allah, Allah created spouse for man so that he can marry and then he can have a loving companion uh, with whom he can share the difficulties of life and he can have contentment and he can reproduce. And, you know, this is so much blessing uh, in a spouse. So Allah Ta'ala is telling that, have we not created you in pairs? Then Allah Ta'ala has uh, Allah Ta'ala is telling, وَجَعَلْنَا جَعَلَ جَعَيْن and lam. It means made, make. Made. Okay, so Allah Ta'ala is asking. So, وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ subata, And have we, uh, and um, we have made Naum. Naum is sleeps. And kum comes for you. So Allah Ta'ala says that, and we have made your sleep subata. That means for rest. So Allah Ta'ala is telling that we have made sleep a means of rest for you. When a person rests, when man rests, so he gets uh, uh, he gets uh, that the need, the rest that he needs to carry on his uh, uh, daily activities. He is physically and mentally tired when he goes out and works all day. And when uh, when uh, the man sleeps, so he is rejuvenated. He gets the energy. And um, um, like if someone does not sleep for some uh, long time, how does he feel? He feels like uh, everything is disturbed. So sleep is also a big blessing for us. So Allah Ta'ala is uh, mentioning his blessing. And he's asking man to ponder that 
have we not made uh, sleep a means of rest for you and when if a person wakes up from sleep how uh, energy energized he feels and all the fatigue goes away so when uh, even if for sometimes like we have qailullah so if a person is working uh, since morning and just for a few time he sleeps after the um, after lunch he he, he does qailullah he sleeps for a little bit of time he will uh, feel a different kind of energy so sleep even for a small second is a means of rest for us so allah taala is asking that have and we have made sleep rest for sleep a means of rest and Allah Ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا And we have made a layla libasa. And we have made layl. So we have, uh, we, uh, uh, so there's a word, layl. Layl means night. So, um, yes. So uh, Allah Ta'ala is telling that وَجَعَلْنَا layla libasa. And we have made the night a covering. So there are some words. I think if uh, you can... Um, point out like the one which I have read in uh, written in English so earth what does earth means earth means earth mountains so uh, with uh, jibal so if you are able to um, like uh, connect these words then inshallah you will be able to understand the translation when uh, without looking at the translation so Allah Ta'ala is uh, Allah Ta'ala is giving us examples Allah Ta'ala is telling us that we have made so many bounties for you Again, I'm reading these uh, few verses. Allah Ta'ala is telling that. Alam naja'alil arda mihada. Have we not made the earth a bedding? Wal jibala autada and the mountain pegs wa khalaqnakum azwaja. And we have created you in pairs. We have, have we have made spouses for you. We have created you in pairs. Wa ja'alna naumakum subata. And we have and have we not made like Allah Ta'ala is telling, we have made uh, the sleep a means of rest. libasa, And we have made layl, layl means night, libas. We have made night a libas. And why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling that we have made night a drape, a libas? Because man has night to rest at home. Okay, and uh, the Arab had this uh, um, had this way of speech. They would call, uh, they would uh, uh, use these types of words. So that's why uh, Quran is also mentioning in a very, um, very like it's called balagha, very good speech. Allah Taala, if you just look at the rhythm of everything and you look uh, look uh, at the beauty of these verses, you uh, you can feel how beautifully Allah Ta'ala has mentioned everything. Allah Ta'ala is telling that have we not made night a drape and a day of means of earning livelihood so man has the night to rest at home and the light of the day in which he can go out and earn a living. Therefore night and day are great bounties of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if you uh, just imagine if the night and day would not alternate and if there would only be uh, day, day, day and there would be no night, how difficult it would have become. Right? So Allah Ta'ala is telling us uh, to reflect on the bounties. Like these are uh, things which we see every day. We see the night coming. We see the day coming. We see the earth. We see the mountains. We see our spouse. We sleep. And we see... Uh, uh, the skies we see everything but we do not ponder so Allah Ta'ala is asking us to reflect he's asking that have we not made these things so, and we have made the day a means of earning livelihood and banana is like uh, it means we have built banana wow is for uh, for and banana is we have built and we have built fauka fauka it means above and kum kum is for you allah ta'ala is telling that and we have built above you sab'an shidada sab'a sab'a is seven shidada and sab'an shidada is it is for seven strong heavens that means Allah Ta'ala has uh, Allah Ta'ala is telling and we have made seven powerful skies above you. Waja'alna siraja. Waja'alna siraja wahaj. Siraj it means lamp. Okay. And wahaj means shining. Waja'alna 
siraajan wahaja and we have made a shining lamp and what does shining lamp means it means sun shining lamp here refers to sun so allah taala is telling that and have we not made seven powerful skies above you and made the bright lantern or the sun and the sun generates its own light and the sun provides the earth with many many benefits apart from the light it heats up the earth and it allows the plants and vegetation to grow right so allah taala is telling us to reflect that have we not made the seven heavens so seven heavens you can say there are layer, layers in the atmosphere there are seven heaven allah taala has made strong seven heavens and then allah taala has made lamp with shining lamp that is sun it provides light to the people to the light of the inhabitants of the earth it gives the required warmth to the uh, for the vegetation to grow and everything so allah taala is asking to reflect on these and allah taala continues and he says that wa anzalna min al muqsirati anzalna anzala nazala nazala anzala it means send send s e n d send okay so allah taala is telling wa anzalna and we have sent down so here na is a pronoun okay and whenever noon alif na is coming it it this pronoun comes for we so allah taala is telling wa anzalna and we have sent min al muqsirati muqsirat is min means from okay so min is from so allah taala is telling wa anzalna and we have sent down min from al muqsirat the rainy clouds ma an ma is water ma an sajaja abundant water then allah taala is telling that we have sent down from the leaden clouds rain and we have sent down from the rainy clouds or the clouds which is full of water vapor the, the clouds which is full of uh, it is called laden laden yani ki it's, it has so much of uh, rain about to fall so allah taala is telling and we have sent down from the rainy clouds you can see and we have sent down from the rainy clouds abundant water so who sends down the rain allah subhanahu wa taala so allah taala is telling us to reflect on these and this uh, the, and because it rains it helps in grow uh, the plants to grow and with uh, when the plants grow we are able to eat and survive and the plants becomes a fodder for animals and uh, because of rain they, we get so many other bounties also so allah taala is asking us to reflect on these allah taala is telling that so i have made a, just a short note here that have we not made the earth a bedding the mountains pegs you in pairs sleep a means of rest night a drape day a means of earning livelihood seven powerful skies a bright lantern yani sun the rain from laden clouds or rainy clouds and li nukhrija bihi kharaja nukhrija it means that we may produce li so that we may produce bihi bihi means there it there with so that so there comes a rain so that we may produce there with habba wa nabata corn and vegetation wa jannatin alfafa and garden of thick growth so because of rain comes out crops and vegetation and thick gardens yani thick Uh, you can say thick forest and gardens of thick growth so because of rain all of these um, bounties also comes out okay and now allah taala will continue and he will say that the day of resurrection will definitely come because the question you see the first question was that about what are they asking one another about allah taala is telling that these people are asking one another about a uh, certain things but what are they asking one another about and then allah taala says that are they are asking about the great news and about which they are differing so they were differing about qiyamah so allah taala now says that reflect on these things these things are right there in front of you you have the earth you have the mountains you have your sleep you have day you have night you have sun and you see that there are vegetation coming out because of the rain etc so 
uh, see and reflect and if allah taala is able to do all these things who has made all this all these man has not made all these things it is allah subhanahu wa taala who made all these things so if allah subhanahu wa taala is capable of making all these things then it's not difficult for him to resurrect to make him um uh, as uh, to make us alive once again after we have died allah taala made all of these without a sample so there was no sample that uh, could be emulated to create all this thing it is all the things the earth the mountains everything was created in its originality by allah subhanahu wa taala and if allah subhanahu wa taala is able to make all these things then definitely allah taala can bring qiyama he can bring the day of resurrection then allah taala says that confirms this and he says that inna inna it means verily indeed inna verily or indeed yawm yawm i told that yawm means day so verily the day al fasli fasl is for decision kana miqata is a fixed time so verily the day of decision is a fixed time so allah taala now says that they are they were, they were since they were asking about qiyama allah taala confirms them that verily indeed the day of decision is fixed time yawm ينفخ في الصور فتأتون أفواجا يوم يعني day ينفخ نفخ ينفخ it means to blow the day when will be blown في الصور in the trumpet صور is a trumpet which the angels are sitting with the angels are sitting with the trumpet and they are ready to blow it any time so on that is a fixed time and on that fixed time the trumpet will be blown فتأتون أفواجا تأتونا أتا يأتو تأتونا أونا is for جماعة يعني all of you فتأتونا and all of you will come forth أفواجا in crowds فوج أفواجا plural okay so Allah Taala is telling that and you shall come forth in crowd that means that verily the day of decision is a fixed time so day of resurrection will definitely happen and the day is fixed and on that day the trumpet will be blown and when the trumpet will be blown everybody will come out in the day of uh, resurrection in the plain of resurrection and they will come out in crowd okay are you all following is my voice uh, coming Are you all following? Alhamdulillah. So Allah Taala is telling that the day of uh, resurrection is fixed. The day of judgment, Qiyamah, is fixed, and on that day, all of you will be gathered in crowds. Everybody will come out right from the uh, from Adam al Salam to the last person that who will be on earth. Everyone will arrive from their grave in large number. and allah taala says allah taala describes the scene and again he continues uh, with the uh, with the scene of qiyama allah taala says that yawma yunfakhu fi as-suri fa ta'tuna afwaja the day when the trumpet will be blown and you shall come forth in crowd wa futihat as-sama Futiha fataha yaftahu is an Arabic word. Fataha yaftahu it means open. So Allah Taala says, "Sama, sama is for heaven, and the heaven shall be opened." Fakanat abwaaba, and it will become as gates. The heaven shall be opened, and it will become as gates. So Allah Taala describes the scenes of the day of Qiyamah, and He says that sky will be opened and will become many door. وَسُوِيَ رَتِيلَ جِبَالٍ and the mountain will be moved away. فَكَانَتْ سَرَابًا and they will become a mirage. So Allah Taala, Allah Taala is telling that the sky will be opened and it will become like many doors and the mountains will be made to fly and the mountain will be reduced to dust. In Surah Namal, it is uh, it is mentioned that the mountain that day will be reduced to dust. Uh, Allah Taala says in Surah An-Naml that you will look at the mountains, thinking them to be solid, but they will be passing like cloud. 
and in surah muzammil it comes that the day um, on that day the mountains will shake and the mountains will be reduced to dust and on the on the day of kayama they will be very much uh, there will be lots of violent earthquake the mountains will be shattered and they will be dust and the uh, and it is said that the sky will also be open and it will become like many doors so in these verses allah subhanahu wa taala is mentioning the day of kayama and when kayama will come when the day uh, when the day of resurrection will come and that will come only on an appointed time it cannot be uh, hastened or it cannot be delayed the day of kayama is appointed on that day everyone will come to know what what he has done in the earth and what is in store for them so where for, uh, he will go for his hereafter where he will go either he will go to jannam uh, jannat or he will go to jahannam so on that day the decision of the person will be made and allah taala uh, then continues and he says that surely jahannam is a place of ambush for the transgressor and it is a dwelling place they will avoid, uh, they will dwell there for ages so if you can see here now allah taala is mentioning things about the hell that hell or jahannam is a place of ambush it's an abode for the rebellious they will dwell there and they will not taste any coolness or nor any sweet drink there and they will have boiling water and ghasak to drink and the punishment of hell is a benefiting punishment why is it a benefiting punishment why now there are some people who question that why has allah subhanahu wa taala made hell so it is a hell it is a benefiting punishment and people will go there because they never looked forward to reckoning they denied qiyama they said that we will not be taken into account so now that you do not believe in qiyama you do not believe in allah subhanahu wa taala then it will become a benefiting punishment for you so allah taala is telling that it's a benefiting punishment they never looked forward for the day of reckoning they never looked forward for the day of qiyama and so they never rectified themselves they never accepted islam they adamantly falsified the verses of quran and when they go in uh, hell when they go in jahannam their punishment will increase and increase so first allah taala asks that what are they talking about are they uh, discussing about the day of uh, qiyama and then allah taala tells to reflect on the things around him and ponder over them those things that who has created all this thing all of these things the, that he sees allah taala gives example it's created by allah subhanahu wa taala and now it is um, since he knows that these are not the things which is created by anyone by any human or any by anyone it's created by allah subhanahu wa taala so it is easy for the people it is easy for allah subhanahu wa taala to create the people again to create them after they have died so when the trumpet will be blown everyone will come out from the grave and they will gather gather on the day of uh, resurrection in the plain of uh, resurrection like they will be all gathered on that day the mountains will be leveled up and it will become the whole earth will become flat this is what allah taala is telling and um, the mountains we see that they are so tall mountains all these mountains will be reduced to dust and Uh, allah taala says that inna jahannama kanat mirsada that jahannam is waiting jahannam is waiting in ambush here the angels appointed to punish the people are waiting to uh waiting for the uh, for the disobedient people so that they can punish them that's why it is said that truly hell is a place of ambush jahannam is a place of ambush the angels are appointed there to punish the people and they are waiting no sooner that the people will arrive the angel will start punishing them
and some commentators of Quran says that uh, when Jahannam will see the people coming towards them, so uh, uh, like when the Jahannam will see that the people are coming towards it, then uh, Jahannam will roar and its fire will increase. The Jahannam will, um, um, uh, the, the Jahannam, uh, the fire will increase and um, the other uh, people will be able to see the Jahannam from a distance. So it is said that the Jahannam is lying, uh, is a place of ambush. But most of the scholars say that there are angels in the uh, in uh, Jahannam and they are waiting for the people to come so that they can punish them. And who, for whom is Jahannam? Littagheena ma'aba. And it is for the transgressor. And it is a dwelling place for the transgressor. So those who rebelled, those who did not believe um, in the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who did not believe in uh, Qiyama, the rebellious kuffar, the mushrikeen, so it will be a dwelling place for them. They will live there. La bithina fiha ahqaba. And they will, la is, uh, they will abide or they will dwell there. Fiha, it means in. So they will dwell in Jahannam, ahqaba, for ages. So what does ahqaba means? So Hajat Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu says that one hiqab is equal to 80 years. One hiqab is 80 years. And some day, uh, it has also been reported that single day of these 80 years is equal to 1000 years of the world. There, uh, whatever the interpretation is, the Quran says that they will uh, dwell there for Ahqaba and this uh, Ahqaba is a plural of Hiqab. So one Hiqab will end and then another Hiqab will begin. And one Hiqab is equal to 80 years. Scholars explain it as uh, 80 years. And they say that when one uh, will end, other will begin. And some scholars say that we do not comment on what Hiqab is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. Because in Surah Nisa also they, uh, the word is coming and here uh, Allah Ta'ala says that the dwellers of the Jahannam will dwell there for eternity. Okay, are you all following? So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is telling that the hell is waiting for the people. The hell is a place of ambush. The angels there are waiting for the people to come in so that they can punish them. And the people, when they enter hell, they will be they will dwell there and they will dwell there for ages. La Yazukuna Zok from the word Zok, it is coming Yazukuna. Kuna is they. Una, whenever Una is coming, it is for plural. So it is they. La is no. Okay, so they will not taste. La yazukuna fiha. Fiha is in. So they will not taste. Taste in they are in bard. Bara and dal is cool. So they will not taste their in baradam wala sharaba. Any cool drink. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that in hell the people will not taste any cool drink. Illa illa means except. Illa hamima wa ghassaqa. Hamimam. Hamim is boiling water and ghassaqa is dirty wound discharges. So about the hell, Allah Ta'ala is explaining that in hell, the people will remain there for a very long time. And in hell, they will not taste any coolness and any nice drink. Instead, what will they have to drink? They will have the ghassaqa. Hamim is boiling water. They will have boiling water to drink and they will have the wound discharges. Ghassaqa. So scholars explain, explain that in Kitab Mirqat, the commentary of Mishqat, um, the interpretation of ghassaq is given, which is said that ghassaq, uh, there are four meaning of ghassaq, which is given um, as explanation. First is that ghassaq is the tear, tear, yani asu. Tears of the people of Jahannam. 
some say Rasak refers to the icy cold part of Jahannam, the Jamharir. Or some say that it is the pus of the people of Jahannam. And the fluid that remains after their wounds are washed. And the fourth interpretation is that Rasak is the frozen decaying pus of the people of Jahannam, which is too cold to drink. But the people of the Jahannam, they will be forced to drink the boiling water and the rasaka, the dirty wound discharges, because they, they will now have no option. And they will have to drink it because of extreme thirst. And uh, the other interpretation, uh, scholars say that rasak is extremely horrid and foul-smelling uh, thing, the wound discharges. Okay. So they ask, uh, these are some things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about hell. So they, uh, Allah ta'ala is warning the people, those who do not believe in Qiyamah, though they do not believe on the day of resurrection, Allah ta'ala is warning them that the Jahannam is waiting for the, for the people, for the rebellious people. Indeed, the um, hell is a place of ambush for the transgressor and it is a dwelling place where they will dwell for ages. And in hell, they will not taste any cool drink. And what they will have to drink? They will have hamim, yani they will have boiling water to drink and the dirty wound discharge to drink. Allah Ta'ala continues and he says that jaza'au wifaqa. It is a recompense. Jaza is recompense. Wifaqa is a fitting Vifaq, it means fitting. So it is a fitting recompense. Why it, now Allah Ta'ala says why it is a fitting recompense? Because innahum kanu la yarjuna hisaba. Because they were not looking for a reckoning. Hisab, it means reckoning. So Allah Ta'ala is telling that this, this punishment is a fitting recompense because verily these people were not looking for a reckoning. Wakadzabu. But they did not look at the reckoning. They did not look at uh, the coming of day of judgment. But they denied bi ayatina kizaba, and they denied our signs in complete rejection. So de they denied the signs of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They did not believe in the day of Qiyama. So that's why it is a befitting punishment for them that they go and do, uh, and dwell in hell for ages, where they will not even have any cool drink to drink instead what they will have to drink they will have the boiling water and a rasak to drink Allah Ta'ala then says that what Allah Ta'ala then says wa kulla shayin ahsaynahu kitaba we have meticulously recorded everything in the kitab Okay. Kullu, kullu, it means every. Shayin is thing. And everything, ahsaynahu, we have recorded it in a book. Fazuku, zok, from taste. Fazuku, so all of you taste. Falan nazidakum. And we shall, uh, we shall never give you increase, illa azaba, except in torment so when they will ask the the, uh, the people of hell they will ask to increase uh, in good things then the good things will not be increased for them the what what will be increased Allah is mentioning everything these people um, um like if you take it to the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who came with Quran, who came with the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was warning everyone that the day of resurrection will come. So worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But these people, they were denying. They were, telling, uh, they were asking one another that uh, will it come? So they were not believing in uh, Qiyamah. So Allah Ta'ala is telling that indeed Qiyamah will come. And then he tells that uh, on that day, the trumpet will be blown. Everything will be laid down. Everyone will be gathered. And Allah Ta'ala then mentions about hell that uh, you will see uh, uh, that um, 
on that day you will see the punishment and you will not have any cool drink to drink instead you will have boiling water to drink and you will have rasak to drink and when you will ask to um, increase a good thing uh, yani if you ask for cool water or if, if you aren't for, ask for something good then nothing will be increased only the punishment will be increased and this is why and allah taala also tells that this is a befitting punishment because they denied in qiyamah they denied in they denied denied everything and they denied the ayat of allah subhanahu wa taala they, they rejected the signs of allah subhanahu wa taala okay till here i have you followed are you following i hope everyone is following now allah subhanahu wa taala is telling the people uh, about the people of taqwa so it's uh, like it's the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala that after every verses which um, which like uh, makes us fear about the uh, about the day of judgment and uh, which makes us fear about hell allah taala then gives a respite by mentioning the good things it makes a, um, uh, gives us respite by mentioning about the people of taqwa so allah taala says that, and that in verily lil muttaqina for the righteous mafaza is fawz fawz is success so allah taala says that in lil muttaqina mafaza verily for the righteous is success hadaika hadaika wa a'naba hadaik is the plural of gardens hadiq is garden hadaik so gardens wa a'naba and grapes So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is telling that so if you can see in the note which I have written here, <clears throat> success for the people of Taqwa, they will certainly have success. They will have gardens, grapes, youthful maidens of equal age, brimming glasses, no futile talk or lies, and compensation or a gift from their Lord. Now Allah Taala is mentioning about the people of Taqwa. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is telling that. the lies telling that in lil muttaqina mafaza verily for the righteous will be success hadaiq wa anaba gardens and grapes wa qawaib atraba and qawaib and young girls atraba is of equal age and young girls of equal age wa kasan dihaqa kasa kasan is a cup dihaqa full cup and they will have full cup la yasma'una fiha sama'a yasma'u it means hearing la is no not una is a plural whenever una is coming it is it means for it's coming for plural they so allah taala is telling that they shall not hear la yasma'una fiha therein la yasma'una fiha laghwan Lag, lag is futile talk. Lagwan wala kizaba. So in in Jannah, the people will not hear any vain talk and they will not hear any lies. Nobody will would um, degrade each other. They will not lie to each other and they will not talk any um, futile talk. Jaza am jaza. So jaza jaza is a reward. Allah Taala now uh, now Allah Taala mentions about Jannah. Allah Taala uh, Allah Taala tells that those who possess taqwa and they live shirk and they come to Islam, they abstain from sin, so they will certainly have success. And the place of success is what does success mean? Success means Jannah. So mafaza is a place of success. It means they will certainly have. Jannah, and then Allah Taala is mentioning about the bounties of Jannah, and He is telling us that the bounties will include the gardens, the gardens in Hadika, and the plural of garden is Hadaik. So Allah Taala is telling that in the in Jannah they will have gardens, and they will have 
land in the gardens they will have grapes ratala mentions about grapes and other fruits also they, uh, they it will be there so um, um, they will have the gardens the fruit gardens the orchards and they will have the young girls of equal age the same age they will be compatible so here scholars say that um, um, when in jannah everyone will be of equal age they will be like 30 year of age irrespective of the age uh, in which they died in this world so there uh, they comes a hadith in shamail tirmidhi where a uh, old lady asked rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that ya rasulullah uh, pray to allah subhanahu uh, pray that allah subhanahu wa taala enters me into jannah so nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to her old woman will not enter jannah so hearing this the old woman began to weep so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent someone after her with the message that she will not be old when she enter jannah she will be transformed into a young lady because allah subhanahu wa taala states that indeed we have created these damsels very specific uh, very specially and we have made them all virgins most beloved and of equal age for the people of the right so all the uh, inhabitants of jannah will be young no one will be old in jannah okay and they will have brimming glasses what does this brimming glasses means it means that um, the glasses will be full and they will uh, ha have whatever they want to drink and uh, the uh, they will enjoy these drinks it will be brimming in jannah they will not hear any futile talk they will not hear any lies the people of jannah will not speak any useless things and this is a compensation for the people because they used to do good deeds in the earth and this is a gift for the believers from their lord in jannah the people will receive much more than what they desire and so it, they will have everything what they desire such that there will be nothing that is left for them to be desired so in jannah they will have all that they want Allah Taala says that jazaan min rabbika ata'an hisaba. It is a reward from your Lord, a, a gift ample calculated. Allah Taala has this. Will, Allah Taala will give this gift to the believers. Rabbi samawati wal ard, and Allah Taala is the Rabb of samawat is heaven. So Allah Taala is the Lord. Allah Taala is the Rabb of the heaven. Well, earth. Earth means earth. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Wama bi nahumar Rahman. La yamlikuna minhu khitwaba. So uh, now Allah Taala has mentioned about the blessings of the Jannah. Allah Taala is telling that. the believers will have a ample calculated gift from their from their lord from their god from their allah and allah taala is rabbis samawati wal ard allah taala is the lord of the heaven and the earth and whatever is between them allah taala is rahman allah taala is gracious and no one will have power to speak with him يوم يقوم الروح والملائكة الصفا. Now Allah Taala is mentioning about the day of judgment once again. The day when every living beings, if you can see in the note in the site, I'm reading from that. The day when every living being and angel will stand in rows. No one will be able to speak except whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala permits and who speaks correctly. That is the day of truth. and we have warned you of the near punishment and man will see what he has sent ahead so now we see that in the start, uh, start of the surah we saw that there were people who were arguing about the qiyamah so the closing of the surah uh, allah taala mentions about qiyamah and allah taala is telling that yawma yaqumu ar-ruh on that day qama qama yaqumu qama yaqumu is for standing okay yawm is day yawma yaqumu ar-ruh on that day will stand 
يوم يقوم الروح والملائكة الصفا. The angel Jibreel السلام, and all the angels they will stand in row on that day. لا يتكلمون and they will not speak إلا من أذن له الرحمن and they will not speak except whom Rahman, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives permission. Adina, it means to grant permission. So they will not speak except whom Allah ta'ala grants permission. So nobody will be able to speak on that day except whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants permission. Waqala sawaba. And whoever will speak, they will speak right. Dhalikal yamul haq. That day is true. Faman sha'a. So whoever wills. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling that on that day everyone will stand in row and nobody will be able to speak except whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits and they will speak correctly. So on that day who will speak? So we know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa will be able to intercede for us. It comes in Surah Ambiya. It, said that, it is said that he knows what is before them and what is behind them and only the one with whom he is pleased will be able to intercede. And they tremble with fear of him. So on the day of Qiyamah, everyone will tremble and no one will, no one will be able to speak. They will all stand in rows. Saf. They will all stand in rows and they will, nobody will be able to speak except whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants permission. And they will speak right. And that day is truth. Allah ta'ala again emphasizes about the day of Qiyamah. He says that Adhalikal yamul haq. That day is truth. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says that so whoever wills they should adopt a recourse towards his rub. So whoever wills they should uh, let him uh, take towards his Lord a place. Yani those who wants to uh, uh, who wants to take their place. Uh, so whoever wills, let him take towards his Lord a place. What does this mean? It means that whoever wills should accept Islam. They should uh, try to do good deeds till once that, and they should try to take a place towards his Lord. Yani with they should follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they should become Muslims. So Allah Ta'ala is saying, فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّحَضَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ مَعَابًا So whoever wills, he, let him take uh, a place towards his Lord. إِنَّا أَنْظَرْنَاكُمْ عَزَابًا قَرِيبًا يَوْمَ يَنْظُرُ الْمَرْعُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَرَاهُ So verily we have warned you about the torment. إِنَّا أَنْظَرَ نَظَرَ أَنْظَرَ it means warning. Okay. Inna, inna means verily. So verily we have warned you. Azaban, azab, qareeb. So from qareeb it is qareeba. Okay. Inna anzarnakum azaban qareeban yawma yanzurul mar'u. Yawm is again day. So Allah Ta'ala is telling that verily we have warned you about the torment on the day which is clear, which is qareeb, which is near. Yanzurul mar'u. So man will see. Nazara yanzuru. It means seeing. And mar. Mar is, um, it is for man. Okay. Yanzurul mar'u ma qaddamat yada. So the, on that day man will see what he has sent forth. So on the day of Qiyamah, the person will be able to see whatever he has um, sent forth, yani whatever good deed he did, whatever he denied. So everything will be clear on that day. That day is the day of Hisab when all the things which a person has done in his life will be brought for, uh, forth and it will be presented towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that day is Qareeb. It's a near uh, the, the day uh, Allah ta'ala is telling that uh, in this surah, verily we have warned you about uh, the torment on the near day. So Allah Ta'ala is telling that indeed Qiyamat is Haq and indeed uh, um, you have been given the warning. So if, if you wish then you can adopt a way towards the Lord. You can adopt the way of righteousness. You can accept Islam and follow the command of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Otherwise we have warned you about the great day of torment and on that day you will see that which you have done in the world. You will see what you have sent for.
then what will happen? ويقول الكافر and the kafir on that day they will say يا ليتني كنت ترابا and then kafir on that day the disbeliever will say I wish I were dust and why will the kafir say that I wish I were dust? because on that day on the day of qiyama uh, the person's book of records will be brought forth and nobody will be oppressed. Whatever good he did uh, will be presented and whatever sin he did, everything is recorded. Allah Ta'ala has recorded everything. The record of the deed will be placed and the sinners, they will see what is contained in their book of record. They will see that woe be to us. What is this book that is not leaving anything small or big unrecorded? And they will find that they will all the things that they that they did it will be presented before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and um, they will uh, feel that uh, that they were dust. Yani um, the, the their reckoning would not take place. In Malumat Tanzil, it is um, mentioned that Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu said that every creature will be resurrected on the day of Qiyamah, even the birds and the animals. And a retribution will be taken from every one of them who oppressed one another in a way. So a hornless goat will uh, take a revenge from the horned goat that butted it in the world. So if there is a hornless goat and there was a goat without a horn and the goat with horn, it um, like it butted the uh, other goat. So the, the one on whom um, Zulm was done, it will be asked to take the re uh, revenge. And when revenge is exacted from all the animals, Allah will command them become dust. So when all the animals will take the revenge uh, from each other, uh, then it will be commanded to them to become dust. So seeing this, Kafir will think that um, it would have better for him that he would also become dust so that he do not have to live in hell forever. So see, subhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned everything. And despite all this, the kuffar they say that um, why is there heaven? Why is there heaven? Why is there hell? And why has Allah Ta'ala made hell if he loves us? So if Allah Ta'ala has made hell, he has also warned the people. There's a clear warning in this surah. Those who deny Qiyamah, Allah Ta'ala warns them that indeed Qiyamah is Haq. On that day, everyone will fear and they will tremble on that day. And no one will be allowed to speak. On that day, all you think did will come forth. Whatever good, whatever bad, even the slightest of thing will be is mentioned in the kitab, is mentioned in the record of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on that day, nobody will be wronged. Everyone will be given the due of what they did. So those who did not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they denied the verses of Quran. They denied whatever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came with. So Allah ta'ala is telling that there is a befitting punishment for them. It is a here it will be befitting befitting okay it is a befitting punishment for them because uh, they never looked forward to recording and they falsified their verses and when they go in Jannah, uh, jahannam then their punishment will only increase they will not have any cold drinks to drink instead when they will uh, become thirsty they will ask for water they will be given boiling water they will be given ghassak, the um, the bad um, uh, water from the wound and all these things will be given to them. And Allah Ta'ala then tells in this surah that uh, if you wish, then you can accept the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you can become of the people, become uh, the people uh, who are towards Allah. You can become the people who are um, on the right side. You can become the people of Jannah. And in Jannah, the, the people will have whatever they ask for. They will have um, whatever they could desire. And uh, they will have the brimming glasses from where they could, they would be, uh, they would be able to drink whatever they want. And they will have uh, grapes, and they will have all the types of fruits to eat. They will have a spouse. They will have youthful maiden of equal age, and they will have gardens and everything, whatever they can de de desire of. And uh, they will not hear any futile talk or lies, anything bad thing will be not there in Jannah. And this will all be a gift from their Lord. It will be a compensation because they used to do good things. So Allah Ta'ala mentions everything in this surah. Allah Ta'ala says that He is the Lord of the heaven and the earth and whatever is in between them. 
and Allah Taala is very compassionate. He has mentioned everything in Quran. It is said that Inna anzarna kum azaban qariban yama yanzurul maruma qaddamat yada. Allah Taala is saying that verily we have warned you about the torment which is near, and the man will see whatever he has sent forth. So it's high time that one should mend him his affair and become a person uh, who is towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who he who is working towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Have you followed the tafsir of this surah? Yes, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so you can uh, again read the translation, inshallah, and um, inshallah we'll uh, read the next surah in the next class because the time is up today. And uh, the way we are, since we are doing the word by word uh, meaning as, as well, so I'd recommend that you sit with a, a notebook where you can jot down the notes. So if you do that, and inshallah, if you follow the translation and word by word, if you follow it with a book in front of you, it will become um, more clear and you will not forget it. And the next time, if you revise uh, it two or three times, and the next time you read just the Quranic ayah, you will be able to understand the translation as well. This is why I'm doing word by word as well okay i hope this um, session was beneficial for you and inshallah um, i pray please pray for me that allah Taala gives me tawfiq to make it uh, more easy and understandable inshallah we'll continue in the next class And um, yes, there's uh, one more thing I want to say that those uh, who are registered in this Quran Tafsir class, those who are registered in the Quran Tafsir class, they can uh, uh, do a quiz. And after doing the quiz, they will be able to download a certificate for the surah which they have completed. Inshallah, I'll give more details about it in the next class. Okay, so Surah Fatiha quiz I will make and inshallah you can uh, give the quiz uh, next week. So inshallah see you in the next class. Jazakallah khair everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Any question you can feel free to ask me in my WhatsApp.